brought to you by the Every Dollar app. Start budgeting for free today. Well, um, I'm new to the show, and I'm sure you get this question a lot, but I've never heard the answer. Um, I'm trying to figure out why I should pay off a 2% mortgage with money that's making 5% or 15% or whatever. I mean, I can pay it off, but man, I 12 years left on a 2% loan. It's, I can't. What, what's your balance? Find the reasoning. Uh, 92,000. Okay. All right. And you have so um, I, I, I understand your question, and uh, I, as a math nerd, I used to make all of my decisions through the math lens as well. The more I've developed at teaching this stuff and learning about it over 30 years and working with very, very wealthy people, one thing, a couple things that come to mind, and I, I completely grasp your concept. It, it seems ludicrous in the way you're looking at it to do that. Um, but let's let's first break down and say, what are you really making? Okay, so... At ninety-two thousand, I'll round it up for your benefit to a hundred, so the math is real easy. Uh, sure. and, and so, if you're if you're paying out two percent, and let's just say you're making seven percent, you're netting okay. five. Agreed. Yes. Okay, and so that's five thousand bucks, right? Yes. Okay. What's your household income? Uh, it's about one hundred and forty. Okay. All right. And, uh, uh, well, it's actually more than that. Cause I, I, uh, collect a pension as well. How old are you? I am 63. Okay. So am I. So, okay. So can, can we agree that $5,000 a year, $400 a month is not going to make substantial difference in your wealth? Uh, I mean, we can agree that. Yeah. yeah it's 400 bucks. A lot of families spend that on pizza. Right. Okay. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's not a lot of money we're talking about. So more than anything, we're talking about a concept than an actual fact. And the reason I know that is, is that we ended up a few years ago studying millionaires because I became very interested in what makes people wealthy. And we did the largest study of millionaires ever done. We studied 10,167 of them. And, uh, we found, by the way, that 89% of them were like you. They're first-generation rich, because I've got a feeling you're a millionaire. Are you? No, not yet. i got a feeling you're pretty close, though. How much equity you got in that house? Uh, I got oh, where I'm at right now. I probably got about 150. Now, what do you got in your nest egg? Uh, I got about, I don't know, 400. So I'm okay, not you're about, a half, yet, about, half, about halfway then, 650. Okay. Yeah. You're sitting on pretty good coin, though. You're not a broke guy. Okay. No. So you've done well. Congratulations. So what we found as we study these millionaires was we asked them questions of what caused them to build their wealth. Where did their wealth come from? Uh, and, and because we want to know, okay, if 89% of them are first generation, it's important to know that nine out of 10 millionaires in North America today became millionaires by doing stuff. So what did you do? The number of them that said, I kept a mortgage and invested it because I made the difference was almost zero it was weird. Well, it was I weird get that because I mean, traditionally we haven't had 2% mortgages. Well, but even, even if you made at a 6% mortgage, if you had it in a mutual fund and you're making 12, you ought to be making five or 6% on it. You ought to still be making that 5,000 bucks spread. But the point right. is that 5,000 bucks is 430 or $416 a month, which is not spit. It's not enough to cause you to become a millionaire. So it's weird. What we did okay. discover in further analysis was with the actual data of real wealthy people, not discussing concept, but discussing who people that really did it was the freedom that they felt by having zero debt allowed them to negotiate with their employer different. It allowed their relationships to be at a different level because there's zero stress. And you would purport to say there's zero stress here because I'm not stressed about this. But you have stress that you wouldn't have if you were debt-free. We have to all say that. If you had zero debt, your stress level goes down. Oh, and by the way, that actually has a physical component to it, too. The number of people with hypertension in America is at the highest level it's ever been. High blood pressure is at the highest level it's ever been. Heart attacks at the highest level they've ever been. Oh, by the way, debt levels are at the highest level they've ever been. There is a correlation in the cause-effect series here in, in the data. And so as we get into all of that, what we've bottom line is you can keep doing what you're doing. We wouldn't call you stupid. 
but the data says that people don't really do that that are building wealth. They really pay off their mortgage and they really take their old mortgage payment and invest it in their 401k so that they have more money. That's what the actual data tells us. And that's good news. Uh, but, but, you know, uh, and we talked about this in the investment seminar a little bit, that the difference in the thing we're leaving out of this discussion is risk. The beta. Yeah. You're, you're not, you're not talking about risk. You, you do carry risk when you carry a mortgage because we've done research. 100% of the foreclosures occur on a home with a mortgage. Mm. And there's, there's a lot more to this. You know, there's the mathematical side, like you mentioned, most people don't actually look at their amortization schedule and their mortgage. Cause you might see, Oh, I'm actually paying 600 bucks a month toward interest right now because of how this thing's weighted right now. You're not making that. And unless you have the full 92,000 in a 5% account, which is almost nobody, doesn't sound like he had all that money sitting there necessarily, then it's not even apples to apples. And another piece is people forget on the Ramsey plan, you're investing 15% while paying off the house. So it's not a trade-off of saying, I'm not going to invest it. Instead, I'm going to pay off the mortgage. Then on yeah, top but he's of just that, saying in off. general, on the concept of why would you ever pay off a 2% mortgage when you can invest it at 10? That's a standard question. And he's right. He's a new listener. It's a good conversation. Thank you for calling in with that, by the way, because people think we're crazy for suggesting you do pay it off. But uh, the rationalization or the justification, the reasoning, none of that, the reasoning for, for the advice is that it's right <laughs> because the data shows that um, the borrower is slave to the lender. The data shows your relationships are different. Your career path changes and, and you make more money because you're not, if you're, if you're running your own business and you have zero debt, you make different decisions running the business. Uh, and, and you take fewer crazy risks and more proper risks in your business because you can, and it doesn't scare you anymore. You're not, you're not playing desperate. You're not yeah. playing, not playing small ball. And, and I've watched small business people prosper beyond belief because their brain is freed up. They don't have this monkey riding their back. Not living in your head rent free. The yeah. other piece is I want to ask different questions. Do I want to be 63 with a mortgage? You know, who be, like who dreams when they become homeowners? Man, I hope I get to hang on to this thing forever. I mean, there's just a life you get to live when you don't have a payment. I mean, mortgage means death pledge in French. Did you know that? Yes. Death pledge. That's what you're signing up for. And so I'm going to live more freely. I want to live in my 60s with and free up a payment, invest it, and you're going to be okay either way. But in the meantime, goodness, I want to get that mortgage off my back. Yeah. So um, it, it is, uh, Jay, it, also doing the show all these years, I have noticed that um, people that have pretty serious wealth never ask this question. And that's not to make fun of you, but they just don't. It, it never occurs to them that they, they're, they're on Georgia's side. They're like, I don't want to be in a death pledge. I want to be out of debt. And they don't even necessarily know why sometimes they just have this pension to get away from it. But your most powerful wealth building tool is your income. And when you don't owe anybody any money, you can use that income. That 140,000 is a lot more powerful than the $416 than any spread you could make. And Dave, I did this when I was in my early thirties, we paid off our house and you know, my financial advisor and creator friends were like, dude, you're an idiot. I can't believe you paid off your mortgage at three point. What? And I'm like, guys, life is more than a spread. I got goals. You know, my wife is able to stay home now because we don't have a mortgage payment. And so you got to think bigger than just a mathematical spread on a piece of paper. Well, I've been doing this so long that I've seen people's lives change in all areas of their life. And that actually has a mathematical effect as well. For instance, you don't have to work for a toxic boss. You can go work for somebody else that pays you more and you have a better quality of life. Your stress level goes down. Your doctor bills go down. Um, all these things run together. More options, more margin, more freedom, yeah. more joy. I'll take it. Turns out God knew what he was talking about. Get rid of the death pledge. The borrower is slave to the lender. You don't believe me? Try paying it all off and see if you don't feel like you're free. Create your free every dollar budget today. The simplest way to budget for your life.